What's up guys, I'm here from Mario Everything and welcome to this new video. In this video, we'll be talking about universal control and everything that's new in macOS 12.3 and iOS and iPadOS 15.4. Universal control is finally here after over uh, many months of waiting, over half a year of waiting for this feature, it's finally here. And I can't wait to show it to you. This works without any setup. I just had to update both my Mac and iPad and just keep my Mac right here. Um, just put it up on the stand and it actually detected the location of the iPad, which I was quite surprised by because Sidecar never was able to detect the exact location of the iPad, but Universal Control did it perfectly. It was able to recognize that the iPad is right here. And as you can see, that the cursor is perfectly in sync with the cursor on the iMac. And um, just let me mention that I have not updated the location of the iPad myself. This is how it is right from the beginning automatically. Let me just go to system preferences and show it to you. So this is how it has been from the start. And I had to make no changes here, just ready to go. And the, uh, the thing showed up here and I was able to put my uh, or share my cursor between my iPad and iMac. And I can basically do everything here. And this is currently a wireless connection and it just feels as good as a wired connection. It's so good. File sharing is also amazing on here. Let me just show you a demo. Uh, let me get this folder right here. So as you can see, I already have two files here for the demo, but I'm gonna go and take this gold two file right here and drag it. There you go. It's on the iMac now. And you can preview it. It's, it's very quick too. And you can also do the vice versa. So I can take files from here and put them onto the iPad. But as you can see, it's glitching a bit. I'm not sure what's the issue with my iMac right here. I had to reboot it to get it to work once, but it works sometimes and it, the other times it doesn't. So currently it is not, but I do have a clip of it working. So it is very unstable right now for sharing files from Mac to iPad, but iPad to Mac works flawlessly as you saw earlier. Everything else is awesome. I mean, I've been using this for a few hours and I've faced no issues. Apple has labeled this feature as a beta, but this honestly is perfect at the moment. This is very stable. Although there are a few issues which Apple has also mentioned on their website, as you can see on your screen right now. Uh, so there are unexpected disconnections might occur on initial connection. Uh, the workaround is that you can sleep the device and wake it again. This should work. And drag and drop scenarios might not work for some file, uh, file types and apps. So this is what I'm facing right now. This should hopefully be fixed in the upcoming betas. And some third party keyboards and mice might encounter issues. I'm using all first party accessories as you can see right here. This is the magic trackpad, magic mouse and the magic keyboard. So no issues with that, at least right now. And scrolling works fine. Uh, all the gestures work re really good too. And if you're a viewer of the channel, you know how excited I was for this feature. I've actually been wanting this before Apple even announced it. I actually tweeted just about a week before WWDC that I want this feature and they delivered. I think it was honestly worth the wait. Uh, I was able to try it back when the Mac to Mac beta or the system file modifications workaround would let you access the Mac to Mac universal control. But the, the experience with the iPad is just next level. Also completely forgot to mention this in the video. That's why I'm recording an iPhone. Universal control also works with portrait mode on iPad, unlike sidecar. And this is really what makes universal control so good. This is why I bought this stand and I can finally put it to use now. On iOS 15.4, Apple has added the ability to unlock iPhones with face ID with a mask on. This is only for the iPhone 12 or newer, unfortunately but still a really good feature. And this disables the unlock with Apple Watch on these new devices. And you need to set up Face ID once again for this to work, one time with a mask and once without. Apple has also added few new emojis. Some of these are variations or skin color variations of the previous pre-existing ones. And some of these are completely new. Uh, you can see those on screen right now. If you have AirPods, then the pop-up on iOS and iPadOS has slightly been updated. I'll show the new pop-up and the old pop-up on your screen. If you have an iPhone 13 Pro or 13 Pro Max and have 120Hz enabled, 
then you will now be able to see a difference in many apps because now Apple has finally fixed the bug which would prevent apps from using 120Hz to its fullest. There is also a new widget which shows the Apple Card balance and details and there are a ton of changes in the shortcuts app. Let's have a look at some of them now. So there are now new icons for basically every action in the catalog. Uh, if you see right here, all of these icons are new. You might have a, a few issues with identifying what action it is, but I think we'll get used to it pretty soon. As you can see, the file action has a new, um, new icon. Almost every action got a new icon now. If you try to use actions that use the filter mechanism, you will now see a slightly updated UI. On macOS, there's also this option to provide output. This is a part of the transition to shortcuts from Automator and it adds more Automator-like functionality. You can look into it yourself. Also, the bug where the quick actions and menu bar folder was duplicated is now gone. So you no longer see those folders here. And on iOS and iPadOS, you can now choose to not show notifications for certain automations, which is a highly requested feature from almost everyone. There's also this new get object of class action, but I'm not sure what it does. And I think if you do know what it does, then please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, iCloud mail custom domains can be set up from iPhones and Macs now. Previously, you would have to be forced to use iCloud.com. Talking about iCloud, iCloud passwords, also known as Keychain, gets the option to add notes to each password. This is going to be really helpful to remember what account you use this for. Unfortunately, the passwords menu is still hidden way deep into the settings app on iOS and iPadOS and in system preferences on macOS. There's a solution on my website. You can check out itecheverything.com slash passwords for a shortcut that fixes this. And lastly, there's a new share play options in share sheets for apps that support it. Honestly, all of these changes in the new updates on macOS and iPadOS make a big update. And I've never been this excited for a point digit update before. And I've actually been more excited for this version than I have been for iOS 14. And that's te that tells you a lot. And I think the last time we saw such a big update was iOS 13.4. Nothing with 14.4, but 15.4 again does not disappoint. This is a wonderful update and honestly can't wait for people to get their hands on this. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry if my voice sounded a bit different in this video. I have COVID and I'm recovering right now. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.